Okay, this is my much shorter reactor with a four and a half inch rod, and uh, I'm going to try to start it up. Well, folks. I think I actually got it kind of figured out a little bit. It fires right up anymore. Don't even really have to choke it or anything to get it fired up unless I break the lines open. And uh, this reactor is much shorter. It's about an inch and a half shorter than my last one. And I'm running a four and a half rod, four and a half inch rod. And uh, it's uh, all the same description as my other one, it's just shorter. The rod's made out of 4130 mild steel. Also, since I made the reactor shorter, it, uh, well, it tends to run a little bit better and they don't use much fuel. You're up a little bit, trying to. There we go. Yeah, since I made the reactor a little bit shorter, I can actually turn it dead in about another quarter of a turn to half a turn than what it was before. And, uh, uh I want to show you guys something. This is the rod in the longer reactor. It's 4130. But you notice the scorch mark on the end of it? There's a scorch mark on the end of it. And I think what was happening was after the reaction, it started burning the fuel after that. So I made a much shorter rod at about four and a half inches. And I'm in the process of breaking it in right now. Another thing I did to kind of try to steady the rod out was instead of filing a point like this, it's kind of like a four-sided groove along the edges of it. And uh, seems to be running a little bit better. You still hear the rod banging around on the inside of there. It's a, them rod stops is harder than hell to center. Someone posted that. You know, it sounded like it was a little out of balance. Well, I guess it is because uh, I just need to make the glorified rod stop somehow. See, I do get a frequency reading on this line, but I don't hear. Things in my way. See nothing on the reactor itself. Right behind the reactor, to get a frequency rating. You see around the carburetor. Nothing around the carburetor. But I also get a frequency reading on the exhaust sometimes. Well, that's burning my multimeter. I better cut that shit out. But I don't really get any amp reading. A zero. Yeah. Damn light. Zeroed it. So 
on DC. Bit droppy. So I do have some toughness. My very first reactors on the same flows, I was uh, getting upwards of 195 amp readings on it. But since then, I have not been able to get readings like that again, only the frequency reading. But one big difference there was, the, probably the biggest difference out of all of it, was it was like 32, 35 degrees outside that day. I mean, it was just above freezing. And so the intake air was extremely cold. You know, and that might have been, played a big role in it. And so in the mail, I got an ultrasonic fogger coming in. It's a three-head type Nutrimist. I'm going to try to use to fog the water and then make some type of draw, you know, to where it just draws it out the top without saying and control how much goes into the reactor. But that should cool it down quite a bit and maybe make it run better and cut the gas down. I'm going to try to shut her off and restart it. Well, I shut it down. And I'm going to see how easy it will restart without having to choke it or anything. But it is warmed up, of course. So let's see what happens. my other reactor. I ain't got the inner tube on the inside of it right now, but I don't know if you guys can see uh, the difference in color, uh, temperature, or whatever causes the different coloration. So look at the difference. I run this reactor for about maybe three hours before I put that the magnetic signature on the rod and decided to make a shorter reactor. Now, I get this bluish hue from here to there, but it's kind of cooler on this side. I need to try to get one of them infrared thermometers. I like that temperature reading, but hell, I'm just a hobbyist, you know, I don't have equipment like that yet. <laughs> 